we have made it. Mix mix eight of 2022 Matchbox moving parts. The elusive, hard to find mix that seemed like it only showed up in Europe, but eventually it did decide to show up in America. And thank God, I I have the entire mix besides the Tesla because that casting is still weird to me. I prefer the basic version. Um, I know it goes for a lot of money, which is maybe why I should not have it, but the basic version is better proportioned and it just looks better. So yeah. So we'll start out with the Porsche 911 Turbo. Now I recently showed this one in a package from Diecast Car Guru. This one, of course, and Land Rover here came from Diecast Car Guru. So very well, thank you for that. <laughs> well, I just gotta move some stuff around to make my arm comfortable here. All right. Here's the 911 Turbo. And yeah, I, I, I have Toyotas in the background for no connecting reason to this video, but you know, that might be something I do in the future where I put stuff in the background to connect with what's going on in the video. But so far, I haven't done anything. I'm still trying out this new setup, so. I just want to see what everybody thinks, but yeah, look at this. This is awesome color. I love this one. The Lamley would say, fantastic. Did, fam did Lamley even review the? I don't even know. I, 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 for one, think this is a release he would really like. You got headlight details, Porsche badge. This casting is a very nice casting too, you know? Some people think the scaling's a little weird, which they did loosely based off, base it on a super fast version, but not into, oh my God. This, this, this door is very stiff, well this one's very loose. But yeah, I do, this one's gimmick is opening doors. The color isn't matched perfectly, but I don't expect it to be perfect. Also, yeah, this door is like really loose, like it's gonna fall out. Look at that. I don't know, it still shuts and it doesn't open when I do it. This one, this one, however, it's in there tight. Also, the paint is very thick on there. You can see it like on the side. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Maybe that's why it's a little tighter because it's got thick paint on it. But I just like this like brown copperish color. Oh, the tail lights look amazing on this. Turbo. Wow. I think this is my favorite release. Release. I I think I would like the red one. I don't have the red one. I have the blue one from Premium, which I removed the decals on, which looks really clean without the decals. I just want to put some rims on it. And I think that's the only version, actually. But this might be my favorite. I don't have the red one, though, so I can't say. I wish... What if they did a white one? I don't know. But there is that one. Next up, the Land Rover Gen 2 pickup. I don't have any pre-existing releases of this, this one, but I think I said this in the mail call video. I think this is my favorite, even though I have no other versions to base it off of. Although I think I had the first version in hand because I might have gotten that one from Diecast, or gotten it for Diecast Car Guru. Oh, this is a flat white. Oh, I like that. Or not white, yellow. It's a matte yellow. Also, that spare tire is like extremely undersized. Uh, maybe, maybe it just looks like that because they used larger tires on here. But uh, that looks really undersized on there. But yeah, so it's not like I don't know. It's not completely f matte finished, but it's definitely not glossy. You can see how like dry it looks, I and mean, that's the best way I can describe it. But you do get chrome bumpers on this one. That's a surprise. I like that. Well, or of course, I knew they were there, but it's just, I'm just surprised that they used it on this one. Land Rover on the plate. You got, what are these? Like fog lights, maybe? Headlights. You got your funny looking grill. And the Land Rover, oh, well, it just says Rover on the badge there. I think Land Rover might have been messed up. In production, you can see the interior 
really well on this one, but then of course you do get your opening doors. These ones seem fine. But, and a very big bed on this one actually. I really like that. This, to me, this makes sense that it's kind of like a flat white or yeah, yellow. What the? There ain't even any white cars near me. Where am I getting white from? Um, it makes sense that this is kind of like a flat yellow because, you know, this is a Land Rover after all. It's rugged, you know. I would not want to sit in the middle there. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, so you got two Land Rover badges, badges on here. Tail lights look good. I like the chrome trim around it. Looks really good. And then the chrome trim even continues down the side here. You got your little, would that be a light over the license plate? And this one does have a trailer hitch, so it can tow. Really cool one. I think the construction wheels are very interesting, but they do work really well on this one. That's awesome. Next up, another Land Rover. Well, this is actually a Range Rover, Evogue. This is the second release of this casting. The first release actually debuted this year, so it got two colors in one year. And I love the metallic red. Here, you know what? I'll bring out the, the white one too. And I thought I really liked the metallic white, but I think I liked the red a little better. I don't know. It's a toss-up. I like both of them. Let's take a look at the red. So probably, well, I have to use the same detail prints. Yeah, so I just, just want to see if anything was altered in the detail print. They still have Range Rover in black, all the black trim, fog lights. So it's pretty much the same detail print. And then there are your doors op that open. They, they are really big doors. Like the uh, multi-spokes on this one, all three versions of this casting have the multi-spokes. The third version is a 2023 release that I will get to in the next Moving Parts video. There's your taillights. Range Rover on the back there. Black trim. Evogue. And there's your marker lights down below. We just make sure everything's the same. The marker lights look like a different red. Tail lights look the same, but the marker lights look a little orange on... The red one, but that could just because it's on red. Badging's all the same. Yeah, so they just probably just stuck it through the same detail press. And if we look at the 2023 version, then it would probably look the same as well. Clearing this off. You know, the doors don't fit perfectly on this, but, you know, it's, it's the best possible. And also, what? Oh, that's, that's the metal. There's a metal def defect there, and the paint is just coming right off of it. Oh, wow. Still, love this casting. Although, not many people love the Evogue. But I, you know, yeah, the Evogue in real life is kind of eh. But this is such a good casting, and so is the mainline one, that I, I do really like it, and I will collect it. Now... This one is the controversial model of the case. This is one of two new models, the 1995 Volkswagen Golf Mark III. And I'll talk about why it seems so controversial. This is the one that a lot of people wanted from this case as well. And uh, that's why a lot of people were complaining when this case just didn't seem to show up in the U.S., So some people think it's a little long. I can see that. That doesn't bother me as much, but Diecast Car Guru pointed out one thing to me that was kind of like, ooh, and it is uh, that the rear axle is actually shorter than the front. If we take a look at this, 
Oh, they actually might be the same axle, but it's... Um, the rear of the car gets narrow. And you can see that even here, where, like, the K is almost touching the top of that. But then there's so much room over the one right there. Yeah, so it, like, bows inward. And that's probably why the rear looks like a smaller axle. Actually, it still could be. It. No, they look the same. Mm, it's hard to tell, actually. But yeah, that's kind of funny looking. But uh, I still like the casting. It's a little goofy looking, but still pretty nice. You got really nice headlight details. Volkswagen badge. Black trim. You got your black grills below there. You got marker lights, your fog lights, all that. You're using the six-spoke rims on this, which I guess work. I mean, I wish there was something better, but these are the best Matchbox can offer. Clear windows. Nice interior. And, oh, this one. There isn't a... Oh. Oh, jeez. That's a big post. You see that? It takes up the entire rear seat, that one post for that. Um, I don't know what's up with that, but it does make it kind of heavy. So I, you know, I'm not that mad at it. It gives it some nice weight. Of course, the trunk is metal. The rear window is attached separately. Volkswagen, Volkswagen Golf, the plate there. Very nice tail AT tail. That, that is some really nice detail, actually. I like that. I really like that. And what's that say? It's golf. Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know why. Okay, I don't like that gap, though. That's a big gap. This thing is sitting as far down as it can, and there is a big gap. That 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 doesn't look good. That don't look good at all. <laughs> I just, you know, I got I got to call things as I see them, and that does not look good. I like the exhaust that poke out a little bit though. They look good with a little bit of chrome detailing on there. Yeah, so I'm kind of like split 50-50 on this. There's a couple things that weird me out. There's a couple things that are pretty nice about it. You know, it's a nice release, nice color, nice details. But, you know, I think it's more so the casting that really bothers me. And that's why, yeah, I, I could see past. I mean, it's, it's strange why they did make it narrow like this unless that's how the real car is and they're just portraying that and it's only more noticeable here because it's smaller the length i also i could look past but it's this really this trunk area it's, this does not look good back here this needs to be reworked because yeah that, that's a big gap that's a really big gap i don't know i don't know what do you guys think of the golf but we got one more so don't quit on me yet. <sighs> the Nissan Leaf. This is the 2020 Nissan Leaf. And uh, I should have brought up an older version to compare it with, but I have not. And I actually don't even have the Tomica one available yet. Or the Tomica one, you know, accessible. But this is a 2020, so so, and I can tell you what's different about. Well, it's going to be different anyway because it's a 2020 compared to I think the mainline one is a 2016. But of course, the mainline one has a plastic roof. This one is metal, and they just painted it, so it kind of looks like it's plastic. But you know, of course, you can see the orange showing through because they painted it very lousily. Lousily, if that's even a word. Uh, but they actually match the orange very well on this. I really like that. And the way that light reflects on it there, it looks like a real Nissan color. I really like that. And I really like the front end on this better than the basic version because it, it doesn't look as fat and chunky as the basic one did. I like how slick it is. And, you know, that might also be because it's a newer model. But yeah, you got your headlight details, which look awesome. You got all your black trim. You got Nissan badge, and they also got the little blue dots here in the grill for the electric, the electricness of it, electrified. You got your blue striping here, which continues also on the back around the diffuser. 
And this one's gimmick are the opening doors. Uh, not not too happy with that dashboard. That looks terrible, actually. The dashboard. <laughs> Again, I gotta call things as I see them, and that that just looks bad. But a quick, good thing we don't have to look at them all the time. I like the black roof on here. Of course, you can touch that up. That's not a big deal. That's just this version specifically. Uh, oh, I like I like that they actually went through the effort of putting the decal on the actual window piece. So this is. This with the spoiler and the rear window here are part of the window piece, of course. And of course, the tail light is part of that too. So they actually painted it on the plastic. I'm very impressed with that, actually. I would not expect them to do that. Tail light details look really good, though. Leaf, everything's lined up on this, though. This is like really crisp. You know, it's still a little foggy because. They're using the grainy details on this. But all the details themselves, you know, it's aligned very crisp. And that's one thing I notice about these foggy details. You know, they're never going to be misaligned. You know, when you go to your normal ones here, you know. No, actually, no, it was this one. But the headlights aren't aligned. They're a little down. It's hard to see, but they're down a little bit than they should be. But that's, that's a bad example because there is worse. But, uh... Every time, every time they use these grainy details, they're always spot on. Don't know how they do that, but also these are the same details that you would find on like Hot Wheels Premium. See? Oh, let me just get the dust off that, see? And uh, they're always pretty spot on too. And of course, this, these look more glossy because they put like thick clear coat on here. These don't get it. These $2 models don't get the clear coat, but they do get the premium details. So, yeah, and you can even see on the roof here how grainy it looks. So, I don't know. I'm really happy with this Nissan Leaf. Just don't look in the interior. And oh, look at that. We got two orange, two red, and a brown. There you have it. Let me know what you guys think. It's very, I guess you can say this is a very controversial set. A lot of interesting things going on here. And the fact that it was seldomly available in the U.S. for a long time was even more interesting. <laughs> But thank you all for watching. See you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.